Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and invitation. It's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, I have to say, my colleague Ivan and I came here, although it's in Croatia, it's holiday time, and our wife will kill us. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we don't see you this time. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Only on TV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am representing pretty much large teams from uh, Croatia. We did last two year enormous job about damage assessment, estimation of uh, reconstruction costs, uh, all kind of education, writing guidelines, manuals, and so on. But before earthquake, uh, we did some increased assessment, and that's my today's presentation, and I will try. All the team is now gathered in Croatian Center of Engineering, newly formed after uh, the earthquake. Okay, this is a bit my slide, what I'm talking about uh, from last presentation to time 19, and Marta was presenting one part, I'm presenting the second, and these, these were some of the conclusions, and we were talking about law of famous awareness, uh, big problems about building stock, uh, nothing about risk assessment method, and so on. Uh, we were chasing few chances, but I have to admit that uh, this earthquake change was a game changer and uh, everything changed after that. We were telling some jokes about Jen. This is Sam, our creation earthquake misery at that time. But, <laughs> but uh, okay, something changed. I will try to introduce you very shortly because you know Croatia is very small, very perfect pro region. We had many earthquakes, but a uh, few of speakers pronounced, and I also, the Skopje earthquake was a, the game changer in you know, this area. And uh, now we're forming this creation center, this, uh, how to say, ISIS was our, something like a guide, and we tried to, to see some steps as these guys helped us a lot in uh, aftermath. In, after earthquakes, and uh, that's that's our goal. Okay, uh, I have to say uh, after the buildings after earthquake uh, made after earthquake after Skopje earthquake, mostly didn't have any damages. Mm, few of them, and that's that's interesting thing to analyze uh, all these stories we heard uh, we heard today in Croatia. When we became an independent country, uh, separate for ISIS, there's few silos like uh, OSIEC faculty, our faculty split Rieta, but we didn't have uh, centralized knowledge in Croatia and Central awareness dropped severely, and that was our huge problem in Croatia. This is this was uh, our system before earthquake. Several ministries, but uh, inside these ministries. Um, uh, nobody was solving these crucial problems, and uh, we are like on Balkan specific country with a very limited or no funds, and that was our our main problem. Okay, but uh, official conclusion is this: that safety risk is unacceptable for Croatia in, in general. And when we talk about uh, risk assessments, uh, we have legally prescribed. Disaster is assessment for state, whole country, for counties, in every city. But we have to be honest; these assessments are very old, outdated, with very limited input data. And then, there, then we are hoping about some huge safety risk assessment project, for the, I describe on the end of my presentation. And that that is the reality. That was the reality before it. Okay. Things started to, to change when, of course, in Croatia and some other countries, similar country, when the European Commission started to force some things, and uh, they they forced to make some uh, assessments. We were at that time some kind of scientific support, and we did some uh, risk identification, but uh, without do deep analysis, it's all obvious that. Uh, Earthquake is unacceptable risk, and uh, like many strategies in Balkan country, we choose to ignore, ignore that problem. <laughs> and uh, 
like I said, awareness was a problem. Always, always was a problem here. Yeah. Okay, but uh, in continue we did some safety increase assessment. It was interesting, both of them was for city of Zagreb. First one was uh, for really like, the rough based of uh, engineering judgments and uh, but the uh, results were this red map here and uh, second one we catch the water approaches with fragility curves exposure uh, cooperation with students at that time and uh, we did we got some good results you can see this around the center of city of Zagreb but we will show some results from earthquake uh, later on. Okay, I repeat it several times, but again, the conclusion was, was this. Just a few sentences about exposure. Uh, in, it is in our mindset, I think, in all Balkans that we try to build the buildings forever. It's in my own mindset. Uh, maintenance and everything else is a little bit good side. And uh, this is like you see here, no code or low code. Most of the buildings are low code or no code. And we have, like I said, poor maintenance and massive illegal, illegal construction. And again, sorry, uh, this safety risk awareness in this illegal, undocumented, unfavorable reconstruction, old city of Zagreb, that was one of the big problems in, uh, in Zagreb. Okay, this was few few minutes before earthquake, uh, we tried to gather this creation of forces 2019, it was 100th year of our university in Zagreb, and that was big gathering talent was there. And uh, we tried af in aftermath uh, some media that tried to raise the degrees of awareness, and uh, after uh, Albania, when we, were, we came back, we got some promises to make some changes in Zagreb, but we didn't manage because uh, in March 2020, uh, earthquake surprised us, but twice. First one in March and, and landed here in Petrinja. I spoke with uh, Helen today. This Zagreb earthquake made some changes, but without this Petrinja earthquake, in my opinion, nothing will, will be changed. Petrinja earthquake was this nail in coffin for our government to stop ignoring things. So that, that, uh, that was the game changer. Okay, I will, I will skip this uh, general part. I, I know you all know about that, but I have to point out that um, we were really, really lucky because the COVID, most of the people went outside of the city. And uh, in general, it was what was surprising these financial losses far exceeding what expectation for the end that side. Uh, few most famous pictures of our churches, uh, hospitals, where they are mostly built 1880 after big Zagreb earthquake. Our university is also very old. And this, I want to point out, main dangers was roof chimneys and gables walls. And what is interesting from the whole curves we are talking about. Uh, okay, we can see here the detaching of the wall, also stability out of the plane, and some and usual things in Zagreb. Okay, another thing, uh, when we, you walk in Zagreb today, you can't see any damage from outside. Most of the buildings are wounded from inside, except these illegally, what I mentioned, illegally made houses outside of the city near the epicenter. These are pictures from there. Okay, in general, there were about 26,000 damage assessment. I think 22,000 buildings were damaged. 5% was unusable, but I want to point out this uh, only four city, historical city parts were inside was 70 to 80% of all damages. And you can see here on that these fancy heat maps, pretty much the same, this is the center part of the uh, city of Zagreb. We like to say protected, ambientally or historically protected part of the city. And what is interesting that this is, uh, this part is made of city blocks. You see the city, this picture, that is one of the big issues of reconstruction process. Uh, 
we all made some project proposals about these uh, buildings in uh, blocks, in aggregates, because this, this is one of the big issues. One of the uh, initiatives is also made by the city of, of Zagreb. Okay, in all that process, reconstruction process, thinking, making some new law, technical amendments, or something like that, this patch in the art face surprised us again, and, uh, but very seriously. I will again skip this general part. Uh, it affected very large part of the country. You see here, and we made over 50,000 daily assessments of building inspection in that period. And you can see most of them is also Again, related to uh, unreforced masonry, a little bit uh, confined masonry, but also most of them are related to cultural heritage. These two pictures, Petrinja, uh, Center Town, and Sisak, this Glina is missing the, the three towns, what are the big, they, they had the big, the, the largest damages after Petrinja. Okay. Uh, I have to point out this priceless database of what these engineers from the field. We had a system of about 2,000 engineers on the field. Very problematic education, and but they made this priceless database. They are still waiting for analysis. Without students, only engineers. Engineers uh, in the team always was one engineer. Mm -hmm. Second one who was can be. 2,000 people or 2,000 engineers plus students? Okay, 1,000 engineers and 1,000 but two thousand in system. I don't know real numbers, but we had a rule that uh, one engineer has to be in the team. Okay, inside that database you can see we have many, many things to analyze. We, have, we are arguing with our conservators because this, this building was before earthquake seriously protected and after earthquake you can see what, what happened and analyzing of failure mechanism reinforced concrete of masonry buildings. And this, this is maybe an interesting one to compare. We had a pre-shock day before 28 of December, and you can see the damages from pre-shock, and later on, one main shock here also. So many uh, pictures to analyze in that uh, database. Also, that was a... Uh, Many buildings were energy efficiency renovated, and after in aftermath or after earthquake, many of them were, were damaged. Also, when we are talking about critical infrastructure, many schools are also were damaged. You can see these scary pictures because we are all lucky again because kids were on the holidays at that time. Okay, the database we are talking about was a foundation for this cost estimate, reconstruction cost and loss estimation, uh, what we made for our government and also with cooperation with government for application for solidarity fund. And there are so many data in, in that and we what were saying all that because all that from that database will be incorporated in this safety risk assessment for Zagreb what I'll show later on. Okay. This is the last part of my presentation, this uh, big, big, huge game changer project. Uh, we were waiting for 2014, old professor Antic proposed that approved was two days after. Okay. This talking about scaring uh, on this conference also in Croatia, they were afraid. At that time they were afraid. And it was approved very well. So, okay, it was it had four big work packages, but I, I try to describe the first one to analyze all methodologies that was Mark I was doing mostly, all methodologies in the world and choose the right one, like because this project is pilot project for all Croatia. Second one is uh, related to different reports, seismology, geotechnical geology all inputs uh, what we need for safety risk and the third one was a key one because all our uh, conclusions before earthquake was about problematic uh, exposure definition and this is the most part of the project what we are now dealing with and finally we will make some who is the leader set. who is the leader of this uh, vp2 only you 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, this database model attributes from the tender, we had only 33, 32, sorry. But uh, Mamino has all methodology, of course, Jamie is inside. We uh, choose to form general ultimate database. Uh, we want to see this maybe unique opportunity to, to make some something like that. And what uh, Shreto said today, maybe if to eat this pilot project, maybe others will copy other city, but we'll try to copy some good, good things. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the team of database. I won't lose my time too, too much, but it's idea to show that whatever we can imagine, we try to put inside and use this opportunity. Uh, in the background, we use the S3 uh, platform, RGS Online, and this platform was used also in the uh, damage assessment process, and it's very, very, very useful for us. Also, we made some questionnaire for citizens. Uh, that was also useful because uh, we have here in Croatia, I am assuming in all Balkan, problem with uh, documentation, uh, drawings, or something like that. And uh, that was one initiative, I think very, very good, because uh, uh, our citizens can provide us uh, some information about uh, building, uh, year of construction, number of stories, uh, structure, and so on. We have we had a uh, small questionnaire with only bless you, uh, part to import documentation, and later on, uh, like my colleague Ivan here, we will analyze that uh, data. Also for archive, uh, energy efficiency process, legalization process, we will try to gather all the data. So it's official data, not only for seismic analysis, for yeah, yeah. Yeah, because this creation center for statistics for yeah, right. trying to gather all data and trying to provide because we uh, in uh, in earthquake we realized that, that is so so important. Okay, uh, my colleague Marta presented last time 2019 here about uh, exposure model. I mean now nowadays these weeks we are trying to implement the, the database inside that project. Okay, I will skip that to the conclusion, to be fast. Uh, we have a lot of scenes from the past. It's like, I think, everybody in Balkans. A serious problem with preparedness, safety based awareness, databases, uh, risk assessments. But these days, we, have, we really believe that this project will be the game changer, big step forward. We try to analyze all data from earthquake, but also all these databases we are talking about building our capacities, like my colleague Ivan here, and try education like this one, connecting with all these centers. But we are aware that this is continuous process. One of idea is seismic certificate to implement inside the system, and uh, nowadays government approved that, and I hope that this will be second game changer to have every building seismic certificate especially after a construction process, but so on. Building maintenance is very big issue in Croatia, but uh, we'll try to implement that in the future. Okay, strong beliefs in that center of perfect engineering. I think this process will last forever. I, I have a joke also when media asked me how long will the construction process will last. I said it should be last forever. The show because I, I'm trying to to connect the construction process with building maintenance with saving certificate and trying to make the system correct. Okay, uh, my last slide is uh, calling all of you on second creation conference of perfect engineering also on again of March 23 of the University of Perfect Inside. Thank you. I'm away. Thank you very much, Yossip. Any questions for Yossip? Yeah. Can you provide more detail about the seismic certificate? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 At least design what is the colors. It's nice colors. <laughs> Sorry? Nice colors on the certificate. Yeah, design. yeah. Design. Yeah, yeah. um, <laughs> okay. Uh, 
in the reconstruction process, it was big, big doubt, a big decision uh, on what level of force with regard to Europe could will we reconstruct our buildings. And of course, these old traditional buildings we can not reconstruct on 100% of Europe. Uh, and uh, we level up several phases, like 50% of Europe was 75%. But in that period, citizen government did not, these uh, structural engineers are, are exposing of their self, okay, I'm guaranteed 50% of Europe, you know, it's not easy. <laughs> Some new earthquake will be problematic. In that sense, we tried, okay, structural designer will be signed the project, but he guaranteed what what is written in the certificate, the percentage of Europe. That's, that's the idea. Of course, I can't provide any more detail because it's only at the beginning. Because this economic part, the cost part, we don't have, like the Italian colleagues have. And uh, we are at the beginning, but that's the main idea. Every building has clearly showed what is percentage, but we all know here that so many uncertainties, you know, that input part uh, or about uh, characteristical buildings. We are not sure that about you know, when you write 55%, you know, it's very tricky and that, that's our struggles today. Okay, we are on the beginning. Um, it's all the sites and uh, create these buildings were apparently very damaged during the earthquake. Uh, on the other hand, all these massive concrete buildings uh, dated back from the Yugoslavian uh, era were virtually untouched. Uh, but what about the buildings uh, built in the last two decades, let's say? Did you learn anything about the quality of the construction uh, in, in the last 20 years? Uh, okay, uh, Zagreb earthquake, earthquake was a small one. 5.5, and uh, most of them these traditional buildings. Uh, these buildings after the Second World War made maybe only infills or partition walls, something like that. Mm -hmm. Reinforced concrete, I never, I had one example of ruined stairs because of bad construction. Uh, last 20 years, I didn't hear anything uh, less these uh, illegally built houses. Mm -hmm. That's a serious problem in Zagreb. We have 100,000 applications for this legalization process. It's a huge number. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And uh, these buildings have problems. So it's basically the matter of shoddy construction. Sorry, rather than it's the matter of shoddy construction. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's basically, if, if, if somebody followed the rules, Basically, that structure would be fully protected against the Like I said, this copy. Fully, it's very difficult to work Well, it is. It's quite fully strong work. Yes, yeah. it's quite strong work. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm asking because uh, I, I don't want to discredit Belgrade in that context, but uh, we can. I, 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 I think in the last decade in Belgrade, we can see really examples of a very expensive building, so great locations, but in my opinion, and I'm not the expert, built not really following fully the standards. Yeah, maybe we, maybe in the paper, yes. We have also this architectural mm. specific design mm. uh, buildings, but I didn't hear about damages. Okay. Good. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they, they won't be damaged in some other earthquake. Yeah. It's just Absolutely. the basics of the Absolutely. earthquake versus the building. That's, they're not true. They're not yes, because true. sometimes just by passing by, for example, you, you, you see some apparent mistakes on, on the buildings, something against the rules, and as you said, it doesn't really mean that the, the structure could fall down during the earthquake, but I always feel like a little bit worried. Of course, there's a reason for that. that. Uh, yes, I would, I'm curious about the seismic certificate. Let's see if I understand correctly. Is it only for existing building or for whole building? Newly designed one also? Is it already mandatory for construction permit? And what does it mean that 25, 50% of the means of the seismic uh, hazard works of the input? 
No, it's What is it, uh, 50% of the euro code? Uh, only on the input force? No, no, it's not. Or resistance. It's Capacity, yeah. Yeah. Capacity, yeah. Capacity yeah. of the flow. Capacity yeah. of the structure of yeah. the flow. Yeah. That, that, that should be guaranteed by the seismic search piece. Uh, okay. It's a trivial because we are also, we have pretty much uh, reality uh, deep experience related to the structure of this kind of. Uh, we try to create it, we are also doing something in, in uh, Macedonia, and it's really... Yeah, we are trying to use this uh, after earthquake wave, uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, it is not mandatory, but uh, still they, they, are, they say to us, okay, you wrote the legislation, we, we will uh -huh, perform. So they, they give you the mandate. Okay, yeah. Because okay. we are a little afraid of it, because we have bad experience about this legalization mm -hmm. process, where, where a structural engineer should sign, okay, this building is okay, but you don't know if it's okay. <laughs> that, that's why we step back a bit to make some good platform for it. Maybe just, um, okay, two questions. And I think you have uh, some experience also in uh, energy. Evaluation in Benin after the earthquake. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious to know uh, what do you think about damage stay about the same type of buildings after the earthquake in Albania and in Croatia. Yeah, we, we were talking a lot. Thank you for, for that question. <laughs> Thank you for hospitality in Albania. Uh, we we don't have in Croatia this. Uh, concrete frame buildings with infills all over. That, that was what we typically saw in Albania, because the ref, uh, reforced frame was standing infills or damaged and energy dissipation or infills. This was my experience. Uh, but in Croatia we don't have that kind of buildings. We have reforced masonry buildings, maybe confined masonry, but not so like, like uh, yeah. yeah, but these uh, buildings in villages, they are pretty much the same what we yeah. I am talking to Marco, ask that question. I said, okay, Marco, we will give you anything, just wait to just put things together. Okay. Because we have a um, GPDR. Yeah, 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 yeah. issues here. Yeah, because that, uh, that database was created by volunteers on, on the field without any legislation, anything. And they, they are containing very serious data, lots of pictures. Uh, and we are now in the process. Maybe the aggregation yeah. or normalizing yeah. something. Yeah, we, we, we have a plan to roll some project proposals only for that enormous one. Yeah. Thank you very much, Josip. Thank you.